NASCAR loses the battle for Montreal, but on the bright side, the schedule is finally out. Let's get into it. Coming up next. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing good today. All right, NASCAR has finally released the full schedule. But before I get into each track, let me just give you the cliff notes in case you just want the cliff notes and, you know, move on without going track by track. Uh, basically, Fontana obviously is not going to be on the schedule. Bristol has gone back to concrete for both races. Um, Richmond is getting the Easter race. Uh, Iowa is new to the schedule. Um, Texas uh, moves back into the spring because of the heat and stuff like that. And um, uh, Darling is now the regular season finale. Daytona is not the regular season finale. Um, and what's the other thing? Uh, Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen is in the playoffs, and I think that is the Cliff's Notes version. So that's the uh, that, and uh, now I'll get into track by track real quick. All right, for the third straight year, the Clash will be at the Coliseum in L.A., and that seems to have gotten some momentum uh, as the years go by, but we'll see how attendance is this season. The Daytona 500, of course, will be the first points-paying race of the year. No surprise there. Atlanta Motor Speedway, second race of the season. This is kind of like an OG schedule. Atlanta used to be really early in the schedule. Like, I know in the 90s, it was either the second or third race just about every single season. So this is kind of a throwback to that. But with the new configuration of Atlanta, it is now a super speedway so you've got super speedway race after super speedway race so if you wreck your super speedway car at daytona you're going to be uh in crunch mode at atlanta so it could get interesting there for some of the smaller teams then you got vegas and phoenix that's kind of normal for those two to follow each other and of course the atlanta date is put there because you know fontana is gone then you got uh, Phoenix there, uh, followed by Bristol with no dirt on it this time. So that's the big change on Bristol. So a lot of people will be happy with that. I'm, I'm glad that NASCAR tried something with the dirt. Maybe try it at a real dirt track uh, with uh, no windshield and maybe a screen instead of the front windshield. So uh, if they want to try it in the future at a real dirt track, do it that way. But I'm glad they tried something new and it didn't work. So they got off of it. So uh, good, good on them there. Then Coda after that. Then Richmond on Easter. That's going to be very inter interesting because Bristol didn't get really good results on having an Easter date and Richmond, one of the uh, most loathed tracks by the fans, just no way around it. Uh, Richmond on Easter, it's gonna be super interesting to see what the attendance looks like there and the ratings. Uh, then it's followed by Martinsville. So you actually have a Virginia swing right there, Richmond followed by Martinsville. So that's pretty neat for the Virginia fans. Then you got te Texas and Talladega. And if the rumors are true that Texas is reconfiguring to a super speedway, uh, much like Atlanta did, then you would have another back-to-back -back super speedway deal with Texas and followed by Talladega. Then, of course, you got Dover, Kansas, and Darlington. Wilkesboro, once again, gets the all-star race. Then you got the Coke 600, which is going to be interesting this year because Kyle Larson is trying to pull the double. That'll be the weekend, of course, the Coke 600 and the Indy 500. So that'll be a really cool deal right there. Then you got Gateway, uh, followed by Sonoma. Uh, then Iowa returns, so that's the big deal. Uh, NASCAR, I talked about the battle for Montreal was lost, and that's why we got the schedule. Um, NASCAR was trying to get Montreal right there, but it's really cool, I think, that they did get Iowa. They didn't get a, they didn't get Montreal like they wanted to, but they did get Iowa, so the return to Iowa. And that is basically a short track because it's under a mile, but it has multiple grooves, so it'll be interesting to see if the short track package works there or if NASCAR can fix the short track package somehow in the offseason. So that'll be something to watch for there. Then, it's, then you got New Hampshire, once again, a short track package track, so back-to-back uh, -back short tracks there. Then you've got Nashville. The Chicago Street race is back. That's super interesting to me because all of the uh, political people and stuff like that acted like they didn't want it back. They acted like it was a huge hassle. It was really successful from a viewership standpoint, so a lot of the fans liked it. So interesting that the Chicago Street race is back. There was a big rumor that Chicago land would be back there. Then you got Pocono uh, and the Brickyard 400. The Oval is back, so that is another big news right there. A lot of people wanted the Oval back. The Oval is back for the Brickyard 400. Then you got Richmond, Michigan, and Daytona. As your second to last race, uh, as I mentioned in the Cliff Notes version, and then the regular season finale will be Darlington. So interesting there. And that is because you see that gap right there for the Olympics. That is basically why that schedule got shuffled like that. I'm pretty sure Darlington will be the first playoff race again next season, and Daytona will be the cutoff race. I think this is just a Olympics uh, deal right here. Then you get into the playoffs, and the first round of the playoffs is Atlanta, Watkins Glen, and Bristol. So that's interesting. you got a super speedway, a road course, and a short track. So that'll sort of be a 
chaos round. Then you follow that with uh, Kansas, Dega, and the Roval. So you got another road course, a super speedway, and an intermediate there. So that'll be interesting too. And then on the next round to get to the Phoenix, you got Vegas, Homestead, and Martinsville. Uh, once again, a short track and two intermediates. So if you break that down, and I'll, I'll, I'll just count Phoenix as its own thing uh, because it's the finale race. Uh, and, and it's also just a, an, an unusual track. It's not really an intermediate. It's not really a short track. But if you break down the other tracks, you got two road courses in the playoffs, uh, two uh, short tracks, and then you've got three intermediates and two super speedways. So it's actually a good mix. And then, of course, Phoenix is the finale. So it's just a good mix of tracks there. So uh, not a bad schedule. Of course, they thought it was going to be super revolutionary because they thought they were going to get uh, Montreal. But they did not get Montreal. So... Uh, at the end of the day, that is the schedule. Thanks for hanging out this long. I know that was a lot to go through, a lot to cover. Usually I try to make my videos uh, smaller, uh, shorter than this. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, it is what it is. All right, the schedule's finally out. Glory, glory, hallelujah. So let me know down in the comments what you think about the schedule. What is your favorite track coming up? Uh, if this is your first time to the channel. Would love your subscription. If you're already subscribed, you know I appreciate you all as well. Question or comments uh, on anything else, also leave that down in the comments comment section and uh if you want to visit the merch store to help out the channel we got these hats you can be a melon head uh get a uh, melon head t-shirt like this or any of the other stuff we got stickers and other stuff in there too uh yeah got nothing else so other than that thanks for your time peace <laughs>